Welcome to day two of Rally Deutschland. This is traditionally one of the trickiest rallies of the season, and day one this year proved to be no different. Sebastian Loeb has won this rally every year since it's been included in the championship, and he set the early pace in his C4. His championship rival, Marcus Gronholm, struggled early on, losing 10 seconds on the very first stage, blaming a cautious start. But the surprise package was the OMV Citroën, driven by Francois Duval, who started incredibly well, settling it into second place, just six seconds behind Loeb after the first three stages. And a poor tyre choice by Loeb for the afternoon loop meant he knew he would be under threat, so he pushed as hard as he could. At the start of the loop I thought I will lose minimum 15 seconds uh, and nothing, so not so bad. But Duval took a harder tyre and with it claimed the rally lead on the last stage of the day. The first time OMV have led a rally since they joined the championship back in 2002. <laughs> There was more disappointment for Citroen as Danny Sordo spun, losing third to Gronholm in the process. But worse was to come when he was forced to retire on the final stage with engine problems. Ford's Mikko Hirvonen had a slow start, but he did find his rhythm to finish the day fall just five seconds behind his teammate. Solberg had a more promising start after a dismal rally Finland, but handling problems followed by a small off, bent his steering arm and saw him drop from 5th to ninth. And there was more misery for Subaru as Chris Atkinson started brightly in 4th, only to go off in stage 2, losing 8 minutes and with it any chance of another strong finish. So after the first day, Duval leads low by 1.3 seconds. Grunholm is third, a further 16 seconds back with his teammate fourth. Privateer Tony Gardemeister has worked his way up to fifth with Kopecky, Ponce and Latvala, making up the remaining points positions. Today is the longest and the toughest of the rally with eight stages providing a mixture of fast public roads and the famous military area with its multiple surface changes and of course the Hinkelsteins. In all there's 165 competitive kilometres for the crews to contend with. Clear blue skies above for the start of stage seven, perfect conditions for rallying and what a battle we have in store this morning. the second day, so as always, the crew's running in reverse order. Chevy Ponce is on course for his second successive points finish after joining the Subaru team in Finland. Oh, but he went very wide there. The Spaniard is a real talent on tarmac. And with Jan Kopecky just 10.6 seconds ahead in six, Chevy is a man on a mission. Oh, but he's off again. Completely sideways on the slippery grass. He just can't get any traction. That's surely going to cost Ponce a couple of places on the leaderboard. A frustrating start to the morning for the Spaniard. It's good news, though, for Jan Kopecky. With his closest rival from behind now falling back, the Czech driver can focus his attentions on Tony Gardemeister, who's fifth, 22 and a half seconds ahead. The Finno is one of the most experienced drivers in the World Championship. The former Seat, Skoda and Ford pilot finished fourth here last year after a big battle with compatriot Marcus Gronholm. So he'll not be giving up fifth place without a fight. Tony is 1.8 seconds faster than Kopecky on stage seven. At the head of the field though, Sebastian Loeb is in unknown territory. Only once before has the Frenchman not led Rally Deutschland after the first day, and that was in 2003 when he went on to win anyway, as he has done every year since 2002. The fact that it's his former teammate Francois Duval in a year old Citroen Zara who's beating him will be all the more galling for the world champion. Duval, though, will be loving every minute of this. Just 1.3 seconds in front, remember, coming into day two. It's the first time the OMV Kronos team have led a rally, and the Zara, of course, is undefeated in Germany, although normally it's low behind the wheel. So can Duval stay in front? 
Oh, not like that, he can't. A wild moment for the Belgian, an unscheduled detour onto the grass, and with low breathing down his neck, it looks like the pressure is already having an effect on Francois. Let's take another look at that spin, this time from the in-car cameras. You can see he was way too fast into the corner, and as soon as the wheels touch the grass, the car is out of control. Using Virgil Spectator now, we can analyse just how crucial that mistake could have been for Duval. He was clearly right on the limit, right up there with Sebastian as they approached the corner in question, but he just carried him way too much speed and was sent careering across the field, while his former teammate quickly disappears into the distance. That could well be the rally lead gone already for Francois. With the top four drivers covered by less than 23 seconds, the rally leader's slip-up will also provide further incentive for the chasing four drivers. Mika Hivenen begins the second morning fourth, just 5.3 seconds behind his teammate Gronholm. Ford's number two has been suffering with a heavy cold this week, but it's certainly not affected his pace here on stage seven. Miko is very, very quick through here, and the pressure is on his compatriot Gronholm to respond. Neither driver is as comfortable on asphalt as they are on loose surfaces, but even so, it's been an impressive tarmac debut for the 07 Focus. So has Marcus done enough to maintain his 5.3 second advantage over his teammates? Not far to go now, and I think the championship leader could be in trouble here. That's the time he's got to beat to keep third, and I think he's going to be slower. Yes, he's lost third. Kiervanen jumps ahead and is now half a second in front. Back with Duval now though, and we'll soon find out if that mistake earlier has cost him the lead. Oh, but that's another error from the Belgian. It's all going horribly wrong for the OMV driver this morning. He's surely going to lose the lead to Loeb now. He was only 1.3 seconds ahead going into the stage. As you can see, he's already well past that. He's going to lose a lot of time here. The rally lead is long gone. Duval's now 15.2 seconds behind Loeb, but he does at least stay in front of the Fords. Francois, it's not the start that you would have really wanted today. What happened? Uh, I go two times uh, off on the road. Uh, the tires is a little bit too cold. After uh, two virages, I go off on the road. I lost some uh, approximately uh, 20 seconds. Uh, quite a lot. It's okay. Duval's troubles see him drop to second. Hibbenen is up to third, half a second ahead of Gronholm. Petter Solberg is back in the points after Ponce's two off see him drop down to ninth. But there are more problems for Francois Duval on stage eight. A stall right at the start of the test has cost a few more seconds. It actually only loses him around ten, but that's enough to see the Belgian slip from second to fourth behind the two Fords. An extremely frustrating start to day two. Gronholm also beats his teammate on stage eight and is now only two tenths of a second behind Miko. Duval is now four tenths further adrift in fourth. It's onto a remote service now and a chance for the crews to reflect on some mixed fortunes. Seb's 25, 26 seconds away from you. Are you still trying to win this rally? No, he's too far away now. And too difficult, I take too much risk. The start on the first stage was, was terrible, I don't know. I couldn't really find a rhythm again, I don't know why. Seems to be the same every every morning, no? but uh, okay, we are fighting back. It's very tight with Marcus and, and uh, well, Francois made a few mistakes, so he dropped down, but not a bad not, not a bad morning anyway. It's going well. Uh, it looks that uh, the fight between uh, the three three cars was too far, and, and Francois is really close. Uh, and for me, we have 24 seconds. So. But it was really difficult. The stages are really tricky this morning. Uh, very fast, very narrow, with some mud on, on some place, so not easy to keep the car on the road. It's been a disastrous start for Duval, but for Loeb it's been almost perfect. And there's plenty more to come, including the 30-kilometer Hansaplatter test.
Welcome back to Germany for day two of Rally Deutschland. Sebastian Loeb is back in the lead after Francois Duval's incident-filled morning. The Belgians currently fourth, four tenths of a second behind Marcus Gronholm. Bianca Beck is on course for his best finish of the season. He's currently sixth, but is still doing all he can to keep the pressure on Tony Gardemeister. He beats him on stage nine, but only by one tenth of a second. Peter Solberg, meanwhile, is back up to speed after damaging his steering yesterday afternoon. The Norwegian is already back into the point-scoring positions in eighth. He has his sights firmly set on Yavi Matti Lavala ahead on the leaderboard. He makes up 7.9 seconds on the fin on stage nine to close to within 20 seconds of him. On to stage 10, and Lavala must be feeling the pressure now. He selected tyres that are too soft for these conditions, and he's well off the pace through here. It's good news for Solberg, who passes the fin to take seventh, and Yadi Matti plummets to ninth. Fellow Finn, Tony Gardemeister is also in trouble on the 30-kilometer Panzerplatter test. He's got hydraulic problems and is nearly a minute off the pace, conceding fifth place to Jan Kopecky. This wild slide, an indication of the handling difficulties he's having. It's all change up at the front too. After losing a position to his teammate this morning, Marcus Gronholm has responded well. He wins stage nine and moves ahead of him and into second, four and a half seconds ahead going into stage ten. A terrific view from the bumper of Marcus's focus here. You can see just how abrasive the concrete surface is here on these military ranges. Kievan, meanwhile, also has the concern of Francois Duval looming ominously back in fourth place. Oh, and he nudged the hay bale there. Well, I guess that is what they're there for. That had been a tree or a Hinkelstein. That could have been a nasty moment for Miko. Duval was off the pace again on stage nine, but is looking better in ten. He must be rattled after his erratic start of the day. It's already cost him three places on the leaderboard, but he is at least still close enough to the Fords to recover some of his lost ground. He's 3.2 seconds faster than Kievan on stage 10 and passes the fin to play third. Sebastian Loeb, though, is back to his imperious best on Germany's tricky tarmac tests. There are some very fast sections today, punctuated by tight junctions, so there is plenty of potential for mistakes under braking. But the Frenchman's seemingly effortless driving style is perfectly suited to these roads. And again, it's a mistake-free and blisteringly quick run through Panzerplatter. Fastest again, Seb is beginning to pull away from the chasing pack. Sebastian, a good time. Yeah, good time, yes. Oh, no problem, we are fighting again with Marcus. All the others are far behind. That's not good for me. <laughs> but, uh, okay, what can we do? Kievanen has dropped two places in the last two stages, and he's now half a second behind Duval. Kopecky and Gardemeister have swapped places, while Petter Solberg is now up to seventh. But in front is Loeb, now with a lead of 26.7 seconds. Before the afternoon stages, the cars head back to Trier for a wash and a service. Sebastian, midday service and 26.7 second leader over Marcus. It's, it's been a good morning's work. Yeah, for sure. It's, it has been a, a very good uh, day for, for us for the moment. Uh, no mistake, good type choice and uh, the car is going well, so no trouble. Uh, only thing is that Marcus came back on the second place. and. Uh, no, it's, uh, we really need to, to keep uh, the car on the road and uh, to keep this position. Mika, go through with me what happens on stage 10. I just went a little bit fast and I started sliding on, uh, on that corner and luckily there was hay pails. Instead of Hinkelsteins we hit and we just hit those and kept on going. Good battle now with Francois though. Good battle. Uh, still a long way to go, and okay, Marcus is not that far either. So uh, I try to keep a good rhythm, but of course there's no no room to do any mistakes. So I just try to keep it on the road. 
apart from the few problems you've had, your speed is still good. You must be happy with that. Yeah, sure, it's so good. Uh, c'est a bit le- less experience to compare uh, Sebastian and Marcus on the, the military camp. Is the aim now to keep Miko behind you or to catch Marcus? Catch uh, Marcus. Back to the action now, and a second run through the four stages used this morning. Lobe out front, but it's still very tight in that battle for second place. Once again, Pella Solberg has been reduced to scrapping it out at the wrong end of the top eight. But with a possibility of chasing down Tony Gardemeister for sixth, he'll keep battling to the finish. Gardemeister is 22 and a half seconds ahead coming into stage 11 and it's been another impressive performance in a privately entered car for Tony. The Finns one of many drivers being rumoured to be under consideration for a seat with Suzuki when they join the WRC later in the year. So he needs to keep reminding the rally world what he's capable of. Jan Kopecki, meanwhile, is on course to equal his best ever finish of fifth he achieved in Spain last year. But he's just three and a half seconds ahead of Gardemeister. Tony, though, is giving his all to retake the position he lost on the previous test, and Kopecki is under pressure here. Back with the Citroen driver now, and unlike most Finns, Tony actually enjoys rallying on tarmac, so he's perfectly capable of regaining fifth here as he pushes on to the finish. There's the yellow boards, there's not going to be much between them. Not quite. Tony is quicker though and closes the gap to 2.9 seconds. Battles up and down the leaderboard this afternoon. Miko Hirvonen's just lost third place to Francois Duval, but with just half a second between the two, the Finn is right on the limits here in the St. Vendelaland test. He's certainly giving his all to regain the final podium spot, and Miko sets the fastest time so far. No scary moments in this one. Well, I hit those bloody hairbells again, but luckily it was in the front corner now. Ahead of a rather bunged up Miko and Duval on the leaderboard, Marcus Gronholm is away into stage 11. He's already nearly half a minute behind the charging Sebastian Loeb, but Francois Duval is still a little too close for comfort, so no chance to ease off the Ford's number one. It's a good time for Marcus through here. He's eight tenths of a second slower than that terrific time set by his teammates. Out front, though, Loeb is well into the stage and a chance here to watch the master in action. These stages are some of the most treacherous in the World Championship, especially when wet. But the World Champion is looking as composed as ever here. The Fords have looked impressive this afternoon, but we'll soon find out if they've done enough to concern Loeb. The end of the stage coming up here. And it's too close to call. He's quicker than Gronholm again, only two tenths of a second in it, but he maintains his advantage. And we've seen an error-ridden display from Francois Duval already today, but has he regained his composure this afternoon? Like Gardemeister, Francois has been linked with Suzuki and has actually tested the all-new SX4, so he too will be keen to impress with a strong result. Just half a second ahead of Hirvenen before this stage, remember, so has he managed to stay ahead? Oh, that was close. He could have beat Miko's time, but he's now just two tenths of a second in front. Might have chosen a little bit too hard and not take so much risk on the last part. Uh, it's really slippery, but it's okay. No After stage 12, Loeb has increased his lead to over 30 seconds. Gronholm is second. Duval beats Hivenen by one second in 12, extending the gap between them to 1.2. Kopecky also increases the gap over his nearest challenger, Gardemeister, to just over four seconds. There's another remote service for the crews to tweak their settings before one final run through Erzweiler and the 30 kilometers of Panzerplatte. So with two stages left today, Loeb looks comfortable in first, but there's a big battle between Gronholm Duval and Hirvenen for second place.
Welcome back to an intriguing second day of Rally Deutschland. We'll get right back to the front runners shortly, but the action further down the order has been no less incident packed. Matthew Wilson is taking part in Rally Deutschland for just the second time and has found it hard going at times today. This spin earlier on, an example of how tricky the event is. He is still in the rally though, which is more than can be said from Manfred Stoll. While his new teammate Francois Duval has been flying, the Austrian was running 10th until his engine expired on stage 9. Chris Atkinson started the day down in 15th after losing 8 minutes yesterday morning. The Australian has been very quick at times though today. He span on stage 11, but also set two fastest stage times over the course of the second leg, and is up to 10th by the end of the day. Henning Solberg rejoined the rally today under the Super Rally restart rule after breaking his suspension on day one. His second leg, though, would also end in disappointment, forced to stop on stage 13 after his engine gave up the ghost. New Ford recruit Khalid al Kasimi has joined the team with the backing of the Abu Dhabi Tourism Authority, and it's been a real baptism of fire for the Emirishan on his Rally Deutschland debut. And engine failure would also end his run in Germany too. Just two more stages remain today then, and it's all still to play for in the battle for the podium places. Just 14.4 seconds separate Gronholm, Duval and Hirvenen. It's not just the fight for second and third to be resolved. Tony Gardemeister, remember, is on a mission to overhaul Jan Kopecky to regain fifth. And with the third fastest time on stage 13, the Finn jumps ahead in this battle of the privateers. Kopecky, though, has clearly not given up. There's just three tenths of a second between the two going into the final stage of the day. And the Czech driver promptly takes the place right back. He 2.7 seconds ahead going into leg three. And can Miko Hirvonen find enough speed to get back in front of Francois Duval? Just 1.2 seconds between them going into stage 13, and the four driver is looking very determined here. With Danny Sordo out, any extra points would be crucial in Ford's quest to maintain their dominant lead in the Manufacturers' Championship, and Miko himself hasn't yet conceded defeat in the driver's title race too. He gets back in front of Duval on stage 13, but is only ahead by two tenths of a second. This has been an inspired performance so far though from Duval, and after starting the day in the lead, he'll not want to finish it outside the podium places. Here on stage 14, it's the Belgian who's on top in this battle for third. He sets the third fastest time, and that's good enough to get back in front of Kirvenen. He's now 5.1 seconds ahead of the Finn. Francois, there's a smile on your face, now you've seen the time. But today it's not so bad. Uh, I am very happy. Uh, really long time my wife in a uh, military camp. Uh, my time here is not so bad. Uh, but uh, for tomorrow uh, I try to stay in the podium. Ahead of the two men squabbling over third is Marcus Gronholm. <laughs> With the fourth fastest time on the final two stages of the day, he does just about enough not to get drawn into their fight for third, but any hopes of closing on the runaway leader are now all but gone. You're still looking at Franz Barat and Sebastian. Yeah, I cannot catch Sebastian, he's going always a little bit faster. World champion Sebastian Loeb, though, has been in a league of his own today. have been in the unfamiliar position of starting the day in second in Germany, but normal service has been well and truly resumed as the days progressed. The Frenchman is fastest again on stage 13, and only beaten by a flying Chris Atkinson on 14, but by the end of the day, he has a lead of almost 40 seconds. You must be much happier now than you were 24 hours ago Friday night when you were in second. Uh, on Friday night it was a good battle. I was happy to, to fight with uh, Duval and uh, I was expecting to beat him today and to let him be between me and Marcus. That was very good but uh, now it looks a bit more difficult.
So, confirmation of Loeb's domination today. Gronholm is second, just 12 and a half seconds ahead of Duval in third. Hirvonen is another five seconds further back in fourth. There's still a battle for fifth with Kopecky just 2.7 seconds ahead of Tony Gardemeister. That's it for day two, but there's plenty for the crews to fight for on the final day here in Germany. For more news and views, take a look at WRC.com.